Creatine can help you gain, on average, around three pounds of muscle mass within around six weeks to a year of lifting weights. Says who? And basically, it's a high-energy metabolite. We uh, have it in our cells, and it helps maintain energy in the form of uh, ATP. So that allows us to exercise at a higher capacity or higher training volume. And over time, that can lead to greater gains in muscle mass, power, strength, uh, performance, things like that. So the whole theory is if you have more creatine in the muscle, you can exercise at a higher capacity and or that could lead to greater adaptations, such as an increase in muscle mass and strength, which is the most common. That's Professor Darren Kandau, by the way. He's a professor of sports nutrition at the University of Regina, and he's an authority on all things creatine. But let's back up for a second. What is creatine? Creatine is one of the most well-studied supplements on the market today. It's a high energy metabolite that helps us create energy by synthesizing ATP, the fuel source for every cell. Dietary creatine is stored as phosphocreatine and helps recycle ATP by donating its phosphate to ADP, making us able to train harder for longer. We naturally produce creatine in our kidneys and liver using three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. It's also naturally found in certain foods like meat and seafood. By providing us with more fuel, creatine can help us enhance our performance while exercising. As a result, the stimulus created by the session is potentiated and the amount of muscle growth, strength and power we gain is increased. So in combination with weight training, so this is a really important distinction, you have to have weight training there to cause or stimulate the magical effects, if you will, of, of creatine. So in combination with weight training, creatine seems to increase cell swelling. Uh, it turns on things called satellite cells, growth factors, uh, uh, proteins involved in, in muscle protein synthesis, and it decreases inflammation and, and oxidative stress. So when you combine all those what I call anabolic and anti-catabolic effects, it typically can help explain the greater increases in muscle mass and strength, which are the most common and consistent performance adaptations uh, that uh, uh, an individual typically will get when they combine creatine supplementation and weight training. In terms of magnitude of effects, you can probably expect to see a few extra kilograms on most of your lifts and a kilogram or two of extra muscle mass. Creatine also plays a role in improving our health. It can enhance mental health, cognition, bone health, brain health, depression, anxiety, and even concussion recovery. From an overall health standpoint, there's not a person really on the planet, even uh, a pregnant female, seem to benefit from creatine supplementation. There's beneficial effects in children and adolescents all the way up to old age. Uh, the safety profile is very strong. Um, so again, the, the benefits or potential benefits substantially outweigh any chance of side effects uh, with recommended dosages of creatine. That all sounds great, but why do you benefit from supplementing with creatine if we already synthesize it within our body and get some of it from our diet? Well, it all has to do with the dosage. Most of us only get one to two grams a day from our diet and from our body, which isn't enough to maximize the benefits of creatine as we urinate a similar amount out of the system. Interestingly, this also means that people who get plenty of creatine from their diet may not respond as well to supplementation. Fortunately, supplementation is safe and dosages of five to 20 grams are generally well tolerated. Based on the available evidence, there is no need to cycle on or off creatine. There have been many claims by various supplement companies about this form of creatine being better than the other, but here's what Professor Kandau has to say. When you naturally produce creatine in the livers and kidney, it forms something called the creatine molecule. Monohydrate that you're consuming in powder form, once the water molecule, which is linked to the creatine, uh, once it dissolves in the GI tract, it's identical. So the creatine that's produced in the liver and kidney and the creatine monohydrate molecule, once it gets in circulation, they both go to your skeletal muscle and they're identical. And the doorway to your skeletal muscle is very specific to that creatine molecule. So all the research that's been consistently shown to be effective is based on monohydrate. There's other forms of creatine that are purported or even theorized out there, uh, creatine hydrochloride and things like that. Some evidence suggests that it may get in the blood faster, but I argue that's regardless. Creatine monohydrate is 100% or near 100% bioavailable. It gets in circulation and then it's taken into the muscle. Just because another form of creatine, which is usually way more expensive, can get in the blood, it's never been shown to get into the muscle and or translate into performance benefits. You can consume your creatine with food or drink. It doesn't appear to matter. 
Candile also advises keeping things simple with regards to shopping for creatine monohydrate. Look for four things. Creatine monohydrate, third-party testing, as few ingredients as possible, and no caffeine. Wait a minute, why no caffeine? Well, simultaneously consuming a high dose of caffeine and creatine can interfere with the performance enhancing benefits of creatine. While caffeine doesn't appear to prevent creatine supplementation from increasing muscle creatine levels, it does seem to prevent the performance enhancing benefits this increase in muscle creatine can have. It's important to note that many of the studies on caffeine and creatine co-consumption used very high doses of caffeine, such as five milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So, while having your creatine in a cup of coffee may not be the end of the world, if you're seeking to maximize the effects of creatine, I would still advise having your creatine at another time throughout the day. How much creatine should you take? As little as three grams per day has been shown to be effective. Most people recommend five. Uh, we typically go 0.1 gram per kilogram of the individual weight. So for example, if you're 70 kilograms, that's seven grams a day. If you have an athlete 100 kilograms, he, he or she would get 10 grams a day. Those are all very effective and we don't uh, see any uh, adverse effects. Um, so it really comes down to the preference of the person. I know females um, are, are more interested in taking smaller, more frequent dosages uh, throughout the day for compliance. So really at the end of the day, whatever works for you. You could even take it once every couple of days or as is much more common, split up in several doses throughout the day. This latter strategy can be helpful to minimize any mild side effects you might experience from taking a large dose of creatine at once. The frequency of creatine ingestion is relatively unimportant. It just seems that if you combine creatine anytime during the day, uh, but a lot of people do consume it in close proximity to exercise. So pre-training or post, that seems to give you the greatest beneficial effects. Uh, the interesting thing is though, uh, there's no difference between consuming creatine before versus after resistance training. So the individual has the luxury of choosing when is the best time for them. Loading creatine is when you take in higher doses of creatine, typically up to 20 grams per day, split into four or five gram doses, for example. That's more than you would usually take, and this is done to rapidly increase muscle creatine levels. Theoretically, this would allow you to accrue the benefits of creatine more rapidly than taking a more moderate dose of three to five grams per day or 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Yeah, so if you consume creatine in the recommended loading or a scheme between maybe three grams all the way up to 20, we're not seeing any adverse effects to the liver, kidney, cardiovascular system, um, or other abnormalities. The only thing that, that will probably occur is if you do the loading phase, which is 20 grams a day for five to seven days. Some people don't like the acute water and or weight retention that can occur. And that can also lead to some GI tract irritation. Um, so a lot of times we will recommend decreasing the dosage, total amount per day and increasing the frequency. Let's summarize what we said into some practical guidelines. Creatine assists in energy metabolism, which increases the gains in muscle strength and power we see from lifting weights. It's generally health promoting in a variety of ways and has a very well established safety profile within reasonable doses. Creatine monohydrate is the most studied form and thus the recommended one. You can consume creatine alongside any drink or food, but caffeine should likely be avoided for co-ingestion. When shopping, look for third party testing and a small ingredient list. If you want to quickly maximize the benefits of creatine, consider entering a loading phase around 20 grams per day in five gram doses, four times a day for a couple of weeks. Afterwards, continue as below. If you want to simply take one dose and forget about it or minimize side effects and hassle, take 0.1 grams per kilogram per day, once a day.